Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will understand the essential requirements of a good earthing system to protect your structure from lightning and other electrical hazards. A good earthing system is vital for protecting structures, equipment and personnel from the devastating effects of lightning strikes. In this video, we will help you understand the six key characteristics of a good earthing system, acceptable earth resistance values, and different earthing methods. But why should you listen to me about earthing? At Axis, we have been manufacturing and exporting earthing and lightning protection systems for the past 30 years to over 100 countries. You will find our earthing solutions used in substations, data centers, and hundreds of residential and commercial projects across the globe. Now, let's get into it. Let's discuss the six basic characteristics of a good earthing system. Firstly, electrical conductivity. The system must have low electrical resistance so that it can efficiently dissipate lightning currents into the ground. You should use conductive materials like copper, aluminium or galvanized steel when choosing the materials for your system. This ensures low resistance and optimal performance. Secondly, withstanding high fault currents. It is essential that your earthing conductors should withstand high fault currents Otherwise, the system can fail and destroy your electrical appliances and electrocute people in your structure. Selecting materials with high tensile strength guarantees that conductors can handle stresses imposed by lightning surges. Thirdly, long life expectancy. Aiming for a life expectancy of at least 40 years is key to your lightning protection system. Achieving this involves using corrosion resistant materials and adhering to proper installation techniques. Given that earthen conductors are buried for extended periods of time in soil with complex physical and chemical properties, the corrosion resistance of the earthen material directly impacts their efficiency and service life. Fourthly, low earth resistance. Earth resistance is the resistance between your earthen system and the earth. To reduce this, increase the surface area of the components you use in the system that are in contact with the surrounding soil. It is done by using earth enhancing compound and employing techniques like multiple interconnected earth rods like this one or buried plates. Fifthly, equipotential bonding. This technique minimizes harmful potential differences between incoming conductors such as metallic water services, power systems and telecommunication systems. We have a detailed video on this topic the link is right here. Sixth, robust connections. Establishing robust connections between conductors is critical for overall electrical safety and a long lasting system. Exothermic welding is used to create these reliable low impedance and corrosion resistant connections between conductors. Also, make sure to use connectors and clamps that meet international or national electrical safety standards. We have a range of videos about exothermic welding, the various clamps and connectors, and all the international standards that are used to design and install lightning protection and earthing systems. If you're curious about any of these topics, head over to our channel and you can find all of them there. If you want to watch more videos about earthing and lightning protection systems, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll find them coming up every week. Now, Let's discuss acceptable earth resistance values. A lower earth resistance value minimizes the voltage drop across the earthing system during a fault or lightning event. This reduces the risk of electrical hazards such as step and touch potential. For a detailed explanation on these risks, please watch our video on step and touch potential. It is important to note that there is no universally accepted value for earth resistance. This is because it varies depending on the specific application, the type of structure and local regulations. Generally, in commercial and industrial settings, an earth resistance value of 5 ohms or less is considered acceptable. For residential applications, a value of below 25 ohms is considered suitable. Finally, coming towards the different earthing methods. Firstly, rod earthing. These are ideal for places with limited space these rods are driven straight into the ground and connected to the structure or equipment they are protecting. They provide a direct path for the electrical discharges to safely reach the earth. Secondly, plate earthing. In this method, we use a plate made of either galvanized iron or copper. This plate is buried vertically deep into the ground, usually at least 3 meters or about 8 feet deep. Their dimensions vary based on the fault current rating. 
These plates are then connected to all your electrical conductors, creating a safe path for any electrical discharge to flow into the ground. Thirdly, pipe earthing. This method uses a galvanized steel pipe to connect with electrical conductors. The pipe is welded to a GI flange that has six holes for connecting earth wires. The pipe is then inserted into the ground using an auger method, making it a secure and effective way to ground your electrical systems. Fourthly, radial earthing. In this system, Conductors are buried radially from a central point like the rays of a star. This design offers a large area of contact with the soil, reducing ground resistance and improving the dissipation of lightning surges. Radial grounding is often used for large structures and facilities such as substations and power plants. I hope you now have a clear understanding of a good earthing system and its characteristics. Before moving on to your next video, Please note that for implementing a good earthing system, you have to understand the relevant international codes and standards like IEEE and IEC. Here's a quick video that will give you an introduction to the main lightning protection standards IEC 62305 and IEC 62561.